Hey, everybody. This is Amazing Fantasy Football. I am Josh, and he is... I'm Chris. He's a very startled Chris there. <laughs> I did that on um, purpose. I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, I, anyways, I, just want to st- I got some energy, man. I'm ready to do this exactly, show. It's going to be a great exactly. show. We're going to be talking about some losers. Um, th- that would be like losers at post or I'm sorry, off season losers, you know, I'm right. You know, not just NFL draft, but also just kind of the entire off season losers. So how you doing today, Chris? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I am looking forward to watching a recording I made yesterday because one of my favorite players of all time in any sport at any position went into the hall of fame first ballot, Tim Duncan, the greatest power forward of all time. Go Spurs go. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to play a little game <laughs> later on after we need to go through our losers. Yes, Cause I don't that. know. I was, um, I, I, I was kind of like not into talking a lot of smack about players this week for some reason. I, I don't know why I, I talk a lot of smack in real life, like a lot. Um, are you saying you ran, ran out of negative about. things to say? Is that what you're saying? Well, I like for this show, like I like to have positive energy, you there know, you like I go. like to be positive about like I'm trying to be a positive person, you know, I'm trying not to like be so negative and everything, even though I talk a lot of trash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, so let's get this show on the road. Um, there wasn't really a lot of news that really developed this week other than the fact that we are in the middle of our dynasty draft at this moment. Mm-hmm. Um, just to kind of give. Uh, listeners and viewers and everything kind of a a, i'm just going to do a quick rundown like the first few picks and how how the draft started so in our dynasty draft uh jamar chase went first overall i thought that was a little interesting not Najee harris but he went second kyle pitts went third i drafted travis etienne at, at the 104 and I drafted him at the 104 because my team I, the team that I inherited was very low in running back depth so I went Etienne, and then Javante Williams went fifth overall, and then a bunch of receivers and yada yada. I don't. I'm not going to bore everyone. Right. Right. Um, mm-hmm. th- I'm not going to bore the audience with uh, our entire draft. I just wanted to kind of just give pe- fo- the folks out there an idea of like how our draft started. So, and uh, yeah, Chris is going to have to do a little explaining himself during the during our game here in a little bit. So, who's your first mm-hmm. guy that you? Who's your first loser? That you My got first going loser on. is uh, Rashad Bateman. Besides me. Besides me. Who's your <laughs> first loser other than me? <laughs> uh, Rashad Bateman, uh, which is disappointing. Um, I was uh, high on him um, in the draft. Uh, I did end up uh, kind of picking up on the uh, Terrace Marshall uh, hype train, which maybe we'll get into later. But mm-hmm. uh, no, I did maybe. like Rashad Bateman. I like the size. I like the college productivity. But uh, he landed in, uh, as we all know, the Baltimore Ravens, where pass volume is an issue uh it's not an issue in uh reality meaning uh they keep not throwing the ball very much and they just keep winning games which which is exactly what worries me they continue to win with their formula and they probably won't change it too much however i have been in the camp of the uh thought that lamar can put it together through the air uh more not you know we're not talking a 5,000 yard pass or 50 touchdowns peyton manning tom brady type of thing but uh, to supplement his rushing more for both his, you know, his career, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, and more importantly to us, fantasy purposes. But the stats are overwhelming as far as you know, just record lows and I say record lows, very low uh, production. I've got a couple stats here. Uh, Andrews, the tight end, has a more consistent uh, catch rate than Hollywood does. Uh, mm-hmm. What is he? 65.3 percent. 65.9 the past couple of years for Andrews. Why am I in 58% last year for Hollywood Brown? So even though Hollywood Brown, I think he had over a thousand yards, something mm. about his stats surprised me. Um, and I thought that, but then I looked, I was like, oh, but your catch rate just got even worse. <laughs> so uh, the moral of the story is, as I said at the beginning, pass volume, it just, and we saw it in our draft. Uh, forgive me, I think he's, did he still go first round? No, I think he went. Uh, Rashad Bateman in our, yeah. in our dynasty draft. Yeah, he went. Yes, at the one ten. Okay, so I thought, and I took Marshall ahead of him. So I thought a couple other draftees were also wary of Bateman, and uh, that's why I put him in my losers today. 
Um, I think what you're thinking of of Marquise Brown is that he had 100 targets last year. Thank you. That's what it was. Amen. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's exactly because he's was. not even anywhere close to a thousand. And yards, then I turn so. and look at the catch rate compared to the targets. I'm like, oh, 58 percent. Mm -hmm. And yep. hey, it's an, a direct product of Lamar. And um, so I, I mean, the only thing I have to say about that is that this is what Lamar's this is going to be his third season or his fourth third, I believe. OK, no, he has three. So one where he started partially in the past two. So this will be his fourth. I think. Go ahead. Correct. So th there, there is a chance that in year four, I think that as if Lamar has grown as a passer, that they could definitely up his the level of uh, passing attempts that they are called that they're dialing up and everything for him, mm -hmm. and then kind of uh, lower that rushing because, I mean, he's not the biggest guy in the world. So if he continues rushing at the rate he does, he could he could get seriously injured. Um, I'm not saying that he will, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying that there's there's room for the pass attempts to go up. And if they go mm -hmm. up, then I think that Rashad Bateman and Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews could be very fantasy relevant. But until then, yeah, I'm 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 down I'm down with what you're, you're saying. You're still on the loser side, yeah. Uh, one yeah, last yeah. thing, real quick, is I I do kind of agree with that approach you're taking. There is this is kind of my last year for kind of being in the camp of Lamar will still be a legitimate passer of the football uh furthermore it's kind of a chicken egg situation did they not have a rashad bateman in town so they kind of skewed more heavy run because they don't have you can that. make that argument yeah or is it or is it not so you know or is it just this is our system and you're gonna go block rashad bateman <laughs> so right let's let's hope for not for fantasy sakes but both me and you agree he's a loser for now right all right, so uh, my first loser is it started out with me saying uh, Kadarius Tony, the wide receiver out of Florida. He got drafted by the New York Giants, and I'm sorry I didn't write down what pick he was drafted at. Um, but and then I just I started looking at the Giants team as a whole, and I I'm just like I think the entire team is like at least on the offensive side of the ball, the entire team is the loser in this off season. They had their Offensive line, according to PFF, so it's kind of subjective, but it ranked 29th overall last year. That's like third worst, right? Or mm -hmm. fourth. Anyways, um, they did nothing, absolutely nothing to address their off offensive line. Now, they do have um, – uh, what, what is that that, uh, that tackle that they got from the Patriots who opted out last year? Uh, Tooney? Uh, Joe Tooney, I believe his name yep. is. Um, he could be coming back, uh, or he is coming back, so that could uh, easily help. And then maybe some of these um, other offensive linemen that they've spent draft capital on do actually end up getting better. So there is room for growth there. But they did. But when your offensive line is ranked 29th, usually you're doing something to address that in the off season. They didn't do that. So I mean, that's gonna Daniel Jones is gonna still be under constant pressure. And life. and and when you draft Tony and the you sign Kenny Galladay you still have I mean we've gone down this road before there's a plethora of passing options why use that draft pick on Tony uh, when he could have yeah there were some character issues or whatever but man he would have been better off going to you know say the maybe the Vikings or or the um the the the, the I'm sorry I almost said their former name the football team Washington football team mm. or you know, just like some of these uh, teams, the the Raiders, like in the second round or whatever, like some of these teams that aren't like just teaming with pass catching options. New meaning, Orleans, the Saints, you know, have like a, a a wide receiver two or three slot uh, coming up in the either this year or next year, open. Right. For him but I mean, over. like, and and why draft Tony when um, Rashad Bateman was still on the board? Um, the, all the Moors, the Elijah Moore, the the uh, Michael Moors, the the you know the. I like how you said that the, in there. <laughs> uh, I, the, what, what's the guy you love again? Um, Rondale Moore. Rondale. You know, Terrace Marshall was still there on the board. Like, why? Like, and that they could have gotten in the second round. Why do that in the first? It doesn't make any sense. I, I know that after next season, the Giants can get out of Sterling Shepard's contract relatively cheap. Okay. Okay. It's like they'll save like $10 million if they cut him next the off season. But, if that's the case, why draft Tony this year? You know, why not like improve that defense or something, and, or that offensive line? Like, there's this draft was teeming with offense, like offensive lineman talent, 
You know, like I would, I, I would just, I, I, I don't get it. And because of Dallas and Washington is what I would do if I was New York Giants. I'd yeah. And, defense. and, but I mean, like, I mean, why, why do that? You know? And, and Dave now Gellin. it's, that's, I think, I think a lot of these, I think all these pass catchers in, in the, for the Giants are just kind of almost like do not touch. Cause I think it could be an awful mess. You know, it could be just Kenny Galladay one week. The next week, it could be Sterling Shepard. The next week, it could be Evan Ingram. You know, like the only, I think yep. the only New York Giant that I want is Saquon Barkley. And and that has a lot to do I with dump-offs. I don't know if I'm down. What's that? It has a lot to do with dump-offs. That's not a sign of a good football team, but it, it right. will produce fantasy and, stats. And, and I don't PR. know if I want him in, a, in like, I before, I think before, like a, like a month or two ago, I said I want I would take Saquon and like as a top five pick. I don't know if I'm down with Coming that now. Off that a little. Yeah, I still want him in the first round, but later in the first round for me personally. What do you think about Saquon? Yeah, I I worry because when the end of your uh, if somebody's in the in favor of Saquon, it, when the end of the argument is you know uh, if Danny Dimes can play well, you know that concerns me because. <laughs> I kind of have yet to see it. What I have seen of yeah, Danny Dimes. Yeah, one's ADP right now, and, yeah. and this is a full PPR that I'm looking okay. at is, is 104. That's a little more palatable than 102, obviously. Literally, it's two picks later. But yeah, I think I'm more comfortable with, like, running back four or five. So I think I agree okay. with you, yeah. Yeah, I think that necessarily pushes Kamara ahead, and I don't feel great about that because I don't feel great about the quarterback situation in New Orleans either. But uh, we're splitting hairs with these good running backs and – I'm mm-hmm. concerned about the New York Giants offense also, yeah. All right. Uh, who's your next loser? Loser. Loser. Her. Kenneth Gainwell. That's a Memphis running back. Went to the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, he brings fifth-round draft capital, and that does not excite me whatsoever. Um, I know that could be a bit of a polarizing thing. Some people think draft capital does matter. Some think it doesn't. You're, you're talking about NFL draft NFL capital. NFL draft not capital. Yep, okay. fifth round. Just wanted, taking... just wanted to clarify that. Yes. In a world where we, we, in a world where uh, a first round running back pick can be seen negatively because of value, uh, it still means a fifth round is <laughs> like you're not investing much. That's what it says with Kenneth Gainwell. I don't know if there was something with him falling, but I think he was more projected to be a, a day two pick, a second or third rounder, uh, if, if memory serves. Uh, there's too many mm. mouths to feed in that backfield. Uh, I know that's cliche, but that's that's as the saying goes. Uh, not only is he behind, well, normally, what was... but normally when you say there's too many mouths to feed, that they're you're saying that about wide receivers. You're not talking about running backs, but in this case, you're absolutely right. You're, I mean, absolutely. There's Miles Sanders. There's Boston Scott. They they just signed. Um, uh, we talked about it last week. Carry uh, on Johnson or Thank the you. week before. Yep. I don't remember which. I mean, and now you have now you have Kenny Gainwell here, and I'm just it, it really perplexed me. I, I was like, why would you sign Carryon Johnson when you just drafted Kenneth Gainwell? Right, why right. would you draft Kenneth Gainwell if you have? I mean, all these guys the can kind of do assets. the same thing, except yeah, for like Kenny Gainwell's his his game isn't really like power. No, nope. whereas Sanders and and well, and that's um, what about Carryon, Carryon is, is he kind of does he he can slot into your goal line role. So there goes that. You know, for not for Gainwell, but maybe for Sanders, uh, although he's not a big guy, but carry on can also catch the ball. Now, I think the important thing to mention, at least from my perspective, is don't gloss over Boston Scott. And you mentioned him. Um, I looked at his catch rate, 79 percent career. Obviously, his volume, Boston Scott. That's not bad. Yeah, it's really good. Obviously, his volume is a little lackluster because he's a backup. And yeah, you know, so but there was, that's why I combined it to the career. So it was it was more of a cumulative thing um so yeah i mean sanders is gonna get i guess the majority. i don't even see kenneth uh, like i'm sorry to interrupt you but i don't even see kenneth gainwell on adp right here like that's Are you looking how at redraft adp is. yeah yeah you're not probably not drafting him in redraft you're probably hoping uh injury happens in front of him and you can grab him off waivers and has full ppr that's value. that's exactly what it is full ppr value i mean he's uh, no. What do I say here to close out? To be clear, I do believe in his talent and his athletic profile. I'll just worry about how long one might have to wait to see fantasy viable weeks from this satellite back. Quick, quick side note: Where do you think Joe Mixon's ADP is right now? PPR, full PPR. Take a stab. The three hundred one. Wow, you are. Really I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the two hundred four. 
Oh, you said 301, and I just said you were really close, and you it really? was 302. Oh, wow. I should have stuck with my gut. I thought I... Yeah, you got you to gotta go with your first instinct, man. Thought I way lowballed it. I kind of... I guess that yeah, means that's I like that ADP. That's some amazing ADP right there. I I'm like sorry, that keep offense. going, man. No, we're, I was done with Gainwell. I oh, was okay. just closing up saying, you know, his talent and athletic profile I'm definitely a fan of. I'm definitely a fan of the, his, his role in a different offense, just not this one. Yeah. I, I mean, I really liked Gainwell. Like, I... I know he's kind of going to be maybe more of a like a receiving back. You know, he's probably not going to be a, a first and second down sort of dude. Absolutely, but, but that's okay because we. Play I, but I was fine days. with that, and I was kind of hoping you would go to the right situation. I mean, he landed in the wrong one. I think wrong I'm situation. totally on board with your loser, right there. Yep. He is definitely a loser. Um, not 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 like really, but you know, he's a he's a fantasy loser. That's for sure. Exactly. Um, so my next guy is actually, it's more of a situation and that's Javante Williams slash Melvin Gordon, kind of in the same boat of the entire New York Giants offense is that Denver's offense wasn't really, or their offensive line wasn't really all that great last year. Um, I mean, Javante Williams, he was one of the two North Carolina running backs. Of course, he was mm -hmm. drafted 35th overall. Um, I thought this was kind of an interesting choice that like. You know, you'd think that maybe they would have taken a Kenny Gainwell, gone for a Kenny Gainwell instead to kind of be like the lightning to Melvin Gordon's thunder. You know, because, I mean, Melvin Gordon, like, when he was originally, like, coming out of college, he ran a 4.52. Or he went a 4.5, like, flat. And he definitely is not running that anymore. He's definitely lost a step. No. He is 28 now. Um, and I love Melvin Gordon like earlier in his career, but right now he's just kind of more of a, a lumbering thumper, you know, like he's lauder. Yeah, exactly. And so why would you draft Javante Williams? Who's just a younger Melvin Gordon, you know, like you're it's thunder and thunder is what you're going with. And for this backfield. Mm -hmm. And I mean, both guys can catch Melvin Gordon, catch the ball rather well. And Michael Carter or Michael Carter, that's his other, that's the other in North Carolina running back. Javante Williams can as well. He wasn't really asked to do so a whole lot in North Carolina, but, you know. Because of Carter. Yeah. And so I'm like, this is kind of like really, and I'm talking more redraft-wise, like this kind of really kind of, the situation torpedoes Javante Williams. And really to the same effect, I think it kind of hurts Melvin Gordon as well. Like if you're looking at Melvin Gordon as being like your like RB2 or even your three, like now you're going to have to look at him as more like your three or four, I think personally, because we, it's uh, just flex option here and there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like last year, uh, Melvin Gordon played in 15 games because, you know, he missed that game because he got a DUI. Um, yeah. If you remember that, I do now. Uh, yeah. I mean, he did have almost, uh, almost a thousand yards with 986 yards last season and he had nine touchdowns. Those are all great, you know, but that um oh, what's his face philip Lindsay also was, missed a handful of games as well so that, it yeah. was just kind, it was kind of more or less the melvin gordon show for at least a quarter of the season well now you're looking at melvin gordon and you know kind of um pressure legs uh, forfeit forfeiting some some carries to the to ro the rookie Javante williams and vice versa and even if it's a 50 50 now you're not looking at all that much fantasy value yeah there's mm -hmm. going to be some weeks and whatever that you know one or the other can really go off but i just i don't really see that um either one of them is going to be really all that viable this coming season just with melvin gordon kind of wearing down and javante williams just coming in and playing behind gordon i just i don't know i'm not really in love with it what do you think man i hate it i um you know me i'm not a gordon fan so even if i were one to believe that uh williams will you know take his place sooner than later i'm still i don't believe gordon's going anywhere um not this year so i mean his contract's up this that. year like uh, um i mean and, just to kind of give examples uh i believe javante williams went yeah he went fifth overall in our dynasty league and that's that's fine like and if you're not and if you don't need a uh javante williams for this year cool i'm talking and my my loot like throwing these guys in my loser mm -hmm. section is based on redraft you know dynasty right Javante Williams, you don't, and and if you really don't need him for this year, and you need and you need a, a running back, maybe More looking back for the yeah. future, cool. Mm -hmm. But also, you have to remember that uh, Javante Williams is like twenty two, twenty three. He's not. I mean, he went. He played all four years in college. So right. good point. Yeah. 
he's not he's not that 20 year old overall he's not that 20 year old like sophomore or junior running back coming out coming into the nfl draft you know he's right he's a he's a four-year player in in college so i think in dynasty it's i think it's still a little rich but again we talk about this off air it's a case-by-case basis especially in dynasty when you look at that roster that you've got year in and year out where you're like i just i gotta go running back here so i get it but Right. I like the receivers on the board better, and that ha- does have a lot to do with situation, like we just touched on. I mean, I, I like I like Javante Williams, like pre draft and everything, pre NFL draft and everything. Like Tatuit is just he, he, he is so he is so powerful. You know, we, lo- we love to so fall, powerful, in ta- but... fall in love with talent, but situation usually trumps talent. Quite frankly, in fantasy, yeah, and, that is. and you know, and you know, and and also too is that I don't know about this quarterback situation. Is I mean, there I. Pretty sure that's it's where be the dynasty Lockford. comes into play more. Like, what are we looking at? Another rebuild here? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not I going mean, well. The, it's going to be Drew Locke for at least a, a handful of games to probably start the season. Agreed. Agreed. And then do we switch to Teddy? And, and then, I mean, and if that's what does the case, it say when you're ready to switch to Teddy Bridgewater? You're done trying to compete, right? And that's pretty much what it says. I, I, I hate to say it because I think um, he's a great person, a great player, but well, not a great player, but good player. They could also just be if their defense is keeping them in games and Drew Locke is keeping them out of games, they could easily just switch to Teddy to get in fact, more I think that's it. consistent I think that's quarterback the key. play. In fact, I think that's the key. I think you hit the nail on the head. Amen. Hit the head on the nail. Hit the head on the nail. Yep. Am I up what? or are you up? I'm up, aren't you I? You are up. You are. Okay, I've got another kind of situation slash bunch of players. Uh, I did make them all uh, – rookies in this particular example, but you could argue it's the situation as a whole and it's the Houston Texans. So I've got Nico Collins slash Brevin Jordan slash Davis Mills. And I think, you know, what more needs to be said here in terms of uh, one could look at this and say, well, there's a ton of opportunity left here in Houston. And I agree with you there and you could call him a winner. That's fine. But I disagree because I think they're coming into a horrible situation at the quarterback with a quarterback fixing sexual uh, sexual assault allegations. And besides that, he had said he wanted out beforehand. Again, chicken or egg, I don't know. Point is, it's tumultuous. And uh, as a receiver, Nico Collins uh, and a tight end, you know, you, while you might get targets, they probably won't be quality targets if, in fact, Watson is gone. Davis Mills, well, heck, he could be slotted as a starter and they could just throw him to the wolves and play for a t- the 101 next year, you know, and lose. I, I don't they think can. that's going to happen. I think it's going to be turd Taylor. And then there's Tyrod. I was going to say, or you could be Davis Mills and have to sit behind Tyrod and Tyrod is kind of like a Teddy Bridgewater where you're like, we just don't want you to turn the ball over, keep the ship afloat. Maybe we'll win six games. I don't know. Maybe we'll put in Davis Mills and win two games. And you know, what's not going to help them win <laughs> their defense. And uh, Amen. So again, coming back to the offensive line and the defensive side of the fantasy equation, they are bad. They're historically bad on defense. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's all I really have to say, but they can um, absolutely be drafted and stashed since they have potential, like kind of on the dynasty side of things, but their value has been largely depreciated in rookie drafts. That makes them losers to me. So. Cool. Cool. Um, let's move on to my last loser. Cause I took some time to prep our little game that we're going to play and that our last loser. And this is kind of an obvious one I know, but it is Aaron Rodgers. He is a big loser out of this post, this postseason. Not only did the, the Packers not draft a wide receiver in the first round to keep or Aaron Rodgers happy. Department. They uh, they also let their center walk. Their all pro center uh, get signed by the Chargers, which great move by the Chargers. I I love the Chargers so mm-hmm. much this year. Um, but, and then they and then they drafted. Uh, they did draft. They did draft a center replacement in the second round, but they didn't take the one that everyone had ranked higher. Like they, so, they drafted. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but there was a, like a. This was Chargers taking I did a not. center in the first. The Packers took a center in the second, oh, sorry, but the center that they did, they did take, I'm sorry, I didn't write his name down. They, they had the, uh, he was right. Um, a lot of draft Knicks and every uh, draft experts had that center that they took ranked fourth in, in the centers, whereas the number one center was that everyone had uh, Creed Humphreys. I believe his name was if who went um, the very next pick to Kansas city. The very next pick was the one that everyone had ra- uh, listed as the best center in the draft. And the Packers did not take him. 
And, and it was just like, so they didn't do that. And they spent a third round pick on, um, ah, I can't remember. Amari Rogers receiver Clemson. Amari Rogers. Thank you very much. Oh boy. 22nd overall. Yeah. I, I've just, uh, That's fine. That's why I had it pulled up. Yeah. I, I just like, I like, why would you wait till the third round when your team desperately needs wide receiver help to keep your quarterback happy? And then you didn't draft the, the, you know, kind of the best center overall in this draft to replace your all pro center. And maybe they just saw something in the center and we'll be, and we'll be all wrong about the center that they did draft. But maybe what if we're all right? Is, a, is an all pro or something. And you start seeing Aaron Rodgers on his back and he's going to start doing that head mm-hmm. shake, you know, his sad face head shake. And he's good. Yeah. We'll Aaron Rodgers still two years left with the Packers, and I could see him retiring after this year if uh, maybe they continue. This, to... Maybe next week. Who knows? They could. Who he knows? could. I, I don't think he's going to, but you never know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Aaron Rodgers, big loser of this offseason. I just I, – I don't get it. I, yeah, okay. Uh, everyone out there, I know that Devin Funches is coming back after opting out last season, but Devin Funches is more or less a tight end. You know, he's he's big, and that's that's his best attribute. That's about it. Speaking of former Panther wide receivers that are basically tight ends now, there's one that is literally uh, a tight end now. We I didn't the, even want to bring that up in the news we section. We buried the, the lead. Yeah. Everybody like, go out. Even gra- news. We buried the lead. Go out, everybody go out and grab Kelvin Benjamin. He has moved to tight end. And, uh, yeah, he'll be top five. Now. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but that was right, well, the uh, actual news. Anyway. who's your Who's your next loser? So I've got two in a row, right? Uh, so I'm going to get this one out of the way because this is going to be kind of a, um, I think this is actionable advice and discussion we're going to have about James Robinson as a loser. We all know what happened. Travis Etienne mm-hmm. went to the, to uh, his former quarterback, uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. Uh, I'm not buying this whole James Robinson has a role BS that uh, Urban Meyer uh, is feeding me, uh, or at least a week or so ago he did. I mean, he will somewhat, but it's just a matter of time. Um, I called it last season. Uh, I mentioned earlier in this show that draft capital matters. There is literally... Okay, no... I want to clarify that you didn't call it. You said it was a possibility. That's not really a call. When pressed by you hard, <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, we're all talking speculation here. This is a possibility. It's possibility he is the guy next year. Like, I get it, but... I was definitely on the side of there's no guarantees this guy is going to have a role or a job here next year is what the end of the. I think the I think the um, the Jags are going to hang on to James Robinson because why not? He's so cheap, you know. Like right. you're, you're not unless you unless you're going to get some sort of like major draft equity for him. What's the point of getting rid of him? You know, like well, and you, at the end of the day, Etienne is a depth. rookie. He, Rookies get hurt can, in a 17 game season, you know. Yeah. And yeah, and now you're now you're up to a 17 game season too. So I mean, right. you're gonna. But barring yeah. injury to Etienne or complete bust happening, <laughs> which we don't believe is the case, um, I you know it, it's just a matter of time before Etienne takes over in terms of at least the majority of the role. Not necessarily Etienne is Mister Bell Cow every down 90 percent guy, but he will be the vast majority guy. Um, I think he's going to be. Yeah, exactly. So, again, I was just reiterating draft capital matters. There was literally no draft capital invested in James Robinson. Um, He did have 240 carries and 60 targets last season, so that's 300 Mm -hmm. opportunities. Uh, I don't think that's going to go to zero, as we just discussed, so that is important to mention. But at the end of the day, he's still a loser, especially in Dynasty. Um, You know, what can we expect over or under 150 carries next season? And you can probably kiss most of his targets goodbye. Would you say over or under? I was thinking like a hundred touches, total. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, you take a hundred and divide it by seventeen. That's only about six a week. So that's not very good. Yeah. I, I mean, it could be I'm more. Definitely we on could, the higher. We could, end we could all be wrong, season. but I'm going with I'm going with the fact that at, at Ohio State and I think even in Florida, um, Urban Meyer used predominantly one back. Rip. He didn't yeah, rotate exactly. him in and out or anything like that. It wasn't situational or whatever. I think he runs it a bit of a, one back. I think he runs an, uh, a pace spread. So sometimes you're literally not coming off the field because nobody's coming off the field. You're not running a substitution because you don't want to give the defense a chance to sub. I understand it's more of a college that. approach. It's definitely a college approach, but the college game is bleeding into the pro game. 
in case you had noticed. Right, <laughs> and and I'm so I'm gonna I'm going with the theory that since Urban Meyer did that in college, he's probably gonna do it with in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And Travis Etienne is definitely a guy. He, while he lacks a little bit of like uh, short yardage power, he's Fair. definitely uh, he's de he can pretty much do it all. So yep. Um, it, last thing you know, I was like say it, is, it uh... might be more of like a, a goal line James Robinson situation, which would kind of suck for Etienne. But Fair. I you think know, can I overcome that with receptions and targets. Yeah, and speed uh, too. I I anticipate them coming out of the gate with Etienne getting like ten or twelve carries game, most of the targets, and I think that just skews as the season goes on more in Etienne's favor. So whatever's yeah. left for Robinson and others, that's that's the habit. So yeah, he's definitely a loser. Uh, but yeah, there we go. All right, what's what, what, who's your who's your last loser? Uh, my last loser. I'll get through him pretty quick. Who's your quick. loserist loser? My loserist. Well, it wasn't in any particular order, but he's kind of last I one I thought of. Uh, Hayden Hurst, um, Atlanta tight end. Uh, the obvious reasons is Pitts has landed in town. I think he will be featured mm -hmm. in the passing game with or without Julio in town, meaning this year and next year, and or next year. Uh, once Julio retires or leaves the Falcons, it's wheels up for Pitts. Um, you know, by that point, you're probably looking at Hurst being gone, maybe. Uh, remember, this is a fantasy show, and his volume will be so low, he will be fantasy irrelevant. Uh, but he is a talented vet and will contribute in real life, but his fantasy value is all but dead at this point. Uh, I would like to have a quick discussion uh, about Pitts' value uh, as it relates to, you know, obviously, Hayden Hurst uh, going to a zero in value. Um uh, right before our little game here. Uh, some people are taking pits at the one one Some people are taking uh, pits over Etienne. Where do you stand on that? I think it depends on your need. And I don't want, and I, and I don't want to be like a, a fence writer or whatever, but so yeah. like in our dynasty draft, he went over Etienne and the guy who took him kind of needs a tight end for the future. And that's Pitts. I think it's a great pick by that, by that player. Um, I think if you need a running back, then you should go Etienne for sure. Um, if you, and if you needed a wide receiver, then, and Jamar Chase sitting there, definitely go Chase. But I think overall I'm going usually running back over the tight end. Cause I mean, Pitts is great, but, and he went and he landed in a great spot because mm -hmm. there's a long history of Matt Ryan using tight ends. Um, uh -huh. My only problem is is that tight ends can be bust. That's my only problem. My... So that's why I'm probably going running back over tight end there. Right, right. And my point, if my, uh, I, I'm erring more towards now running if, the pits. Oh, go ahead. I, okay, so and if you're and if you're saying like um like overall if you're at the 103 and it went Najee Harris and Travis Etienne, I'm definitely going pits there. Over Chase. Probably yeah. So I think that's where unless we unless on. unless I have Travis Kelsey and another good tight end, another serviceable tight end for a bye week, I'm probably going Pitts. I think that's and we're again we're we're literally different by a couple of picks, so we're splitting hairs. But that's why we're splitting hairs because this isn't the top of rookie drafts. This is important. I think I've moved him down a little bit, even though I was the Pitts guy who had fallen in love. I think I'm more at four or five with him, depending on what you think about how much you need a running back there. If you want to go, what's Javante Williams is the second? Uh, I'm sorry, the third back in most eyes, right? Isn't that fair? Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm the one who said that was a little rich for me, but I'm now I'm the one saying at four or five, I almost might prefer to go running back because I think it's just interesting. Well, at the value in a vacuum, we but we both agree that we that it depends on your need, especially in Dynasty, but in a vacuum, that value of one oh three, the third pick overall, I mean he has to be uh Travis Frickin Kelsey to deliver on that value, right? Yeah, kind of. He kind of well, has to be a hall of but... kind of has to be like Kellen Winslow, Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, give me yes. another example: Jimmy Graham in his prime, Jeremy Shockey. Yeah, in his prime. That's fair. That's was pretty good. I don't know. Otherwise, yeah, you give me that. I'm not okay with that. Anyways, so that, that's um, just where where I wanted to go with that Hayden Hurst uh, Pitts talk there. Cool. So, uh, hey Chris, would you like to play? Would you rather? I would. That's our game. <laughs> and we're gonna do that. Um, I would like to start out by saying we're gonna so we're gonna do draft. Would you rather draft this player or this player, player A or player B? 
I'll tell you, like, you give me your answer, and then I'll tell you what their current ADP is. Um, some of these will be redraft, some will be dynasty, and all the ADPs are based on full PPR uh, off of, from Fantasy Football Calculator. I did full PPR because I didn't realize that's what it was until I was like three quarters done. So I didn't I'm feel like going back and changing it. So that's a cool wrinkle. Full PPR, first one, dynasty, hostess cupcake, or Twinkie? Uh, hostess cupcake. Man, everyone says cupcake and they're gross. That's that, that, that quote unquote icing on the top of it is like, it's a little so gross. Yeah. I don't dislike. I would so do Twinkie every day of the week. I think I must like fake chocolate, fake chocolate brownies. Uh, to give you to, to, okay. So the Twinkie, their Twinkie's ADP is ninth and hostess cupcake is 11th. I made those up. I was like, so you were right, or at least you um, agree with the rest of the All right, America. so uh, let's 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 get let's go let's get into the real thing. Um, everyone says cupcake though. That's so weird. Uh, read in redraft. This is a redraft. Jonathan Taylor or Austin Eckler? Oh, full PPR. Full PPR. I'd probably still go Taylor. 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 Um, I would do Eckler, and that is mainly a lot to 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 do with the improvement in the offensive line by the Chargers, okay. and I, and I love and I love Herbie too, so I'm not worried about quarterback. So there's also I a very Austin slow Eckler's... start to the season for Taylor in the Colts offense. What's that? Uh, and it was a very slow start to the season in 2020 for Jonathan Taylor in the Colts offense. And, ta- and Taylor did most of his damage towards the end of the season against uh, subpar of run defenses too. So, At a record I love Jonathan pace. Taylor. I love Jonathan Taylor to death, and I'm yeah, glad he right. landed on my Colts. But I would totally do Eckler over Taylor. Would you like to know their ADPs? I would. 107 for Jonathan Taylor. 112, the very last pick of the first round for Austin Eckler. Feels about right. That is crazy. I thought Eckler would have gone higher, but I, and I think he will. I think I think those will start to kind of get closer to each other, and maybe Eckler at some point will leapfrog Eight, Taylor type of thing. Maybe. Because I mean, even Jonathan Taylor still has, um, you know, Jordan Wilkins to deal with, and, and uh, who Mac. is that guy? And Naeem Hines to deal oh, with right, as uh, well. Of course, Hines. It is I not. Like it Hines. is not the Jonathan Taylor. It is not solely the Jonathan Taylor show. And from what we saw of Eckler's backups last year, I sorry, I'm not into Kalen Balage at all. That's a good point. And uh, what's that, what's that guy's? Oh, Joshua Kelly. He did not look very good when he did play. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm all of, I'm all for Austin Eckler here. I don't even think Kalen Balage is with the Chargers anymore. I, I think could be he's persuaded. It's close. And I think, I think at the end of yours and mine argument, it's it's closer than we think, or it will end up closer. Than I mean, we we're, I mean, we're, we're I mean, they're pre- going pretty close. I just I was like, no, that's okay. a good. That's a great discussion because, like I said, I could be persuaded. I think okay, Taylor's uh, the better overall talent. I think he can be a every down, 80%, 90% share guy given health, which, you know, whatever. Yep. But so, yeah, it's close. All right. Next, next, uh, next, uh, next option redraft once again Devontae Parker or Will Fuller? Teammates. I, I went teammates with this one. Uh, and and redraft, to... redraft once again. Yeah, I got to go fuller. I think they brought him in for speed. I think they brought him in to use him a lot in that mm-hmm. one year that they've got him under contract. And maybe Waddle takes a little bit of a backseat to Fuller's role. Yeah, and I think Parker's gone after next year, I think. So, yeah. Okay. Fuller. Fuller. Okay. Um, well, or, after this next redraft. year, it doesn't matter because we're talking right, redraft. redraft. But but also, like I said, they they brought him in to use him and that that speed is uh where they so go. will fuller's adp is 603 and Devonte parker's is 902 i was gonna say maybe big, big gap digits. there big maybe gap. double digits and yeah. honestly i'm down with you too I, i'm right there with you i really liked what will fuller did last year with deshaun watson and everything more of a featured role. um i don't think tua is deshaun watson but at the same time i really like what will fuller did last year he kind of did it all he wasn't just i run fast in straight lines you know he did he ran routes and he was pretty good at it too. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, next, uh, next one is redraft once again. Steak or brats? Steak or brats? Would you rather have a steak or would you rather have I a feel brat? Like I have a steak much less often, and maybe that's for a reason because it's expensive. I don't think I could give up steak. I could probably find a substitute for 
brats like hot dogs and whatnot. I got to go. A steak. hot dog isn't a brat. It's a brat. I know. Is the, the, like, I, I'm a, I'm a, a big vastly superior version of a hot dog. And I know, but so... I can't give up a fillet. Mm. So good. A rare fillet. So you're going steak? I'm going, I'm going steak. brats. I'm going right. brats. So what, what brought this up is what brought this up. Um, ah. Uh-huh. Uh, it's like a month ago, about a month ago, I was grilling and I had grilled some uh, a steak and I had grilled some brats, like brats to eat, like kind of throughout the week and steak to eat that day. And I was just like, man, which one do I like better? I kind of, and you know what? I'm going That's with brats. I, it's brats I are eat, cheaper. I eat them more. They're I delicious. Mm -hmm. You can top them with just about anything you want other than ketchup because that'll get you slapped in the face. And uh, I put ketchup and mustard. So if you were in, if we were in person right now, I'd slap you in the face. Um, um, but to give you to give you a thing here, steak. You know where steak's ADP was one hundred three. Brats. I was gonna say pretty darn high. The two eleven. I was gonna say like third round. I don't know. Once again, made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, based on nothing whatsoever but my imagination. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the next couple are Dynasty. So Dynasty, oh. focus, remember Dynasty. Got it. I'm going to put you to task here. Rondale Moore. Dynasty hat. Rondale Moore or Terrace Marshall. Good one. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with actions and not words. Although I don't know if I literally ever said I had Rondale Moore ahead of Terrace. Uh, I'm going to go Terrace mm. Marshall. Okay, I have just I'm putting I'm putting you to task here because you did that in our dynasty draft, and I was like, oh, let's see if uh, he has any buyer's regrets here. Obviously, you don't. I'm down with you too. I love Terrace Moore. I mean, I know you love Rondell Moore and everything. Or I said Terrace Moore. Uh, I love Terrace Marshall, and I know you love Rondell Moore and everything. Uh -huh. I just think that he didn't exactly come into the best situation. Uh, mm -hmm. And and you could argue that with Terrace Marshall as well, but I don't really think other than. Um, DJ Moore I, and Robbie Anderson, he has a, a lot in the way as far as pecking order in that offense, whereas Rondell Moore has a few guys to get ahead of. So, And Rondell Moore is also smaller, whereas Terrace Marshall is like 6'3", I believe, and has speed to go along with his size, whereas Rondell Moore has strength to go with his size, or right. to go with his his speed and not height. So, Yeah, yeah I just I don't yeah. think that Rondell... I don't think I ever made the argument that Rondell Moore is going to be a 1B or even, you know, like like a typical wide receiver contributor lines up every play right, right. at the second or third spot. And he's going to have to be schemed. And I think the Cardinals are the right team to scheme him, um, contrary to the okay. situation argument you make. However, his ADP just in rookie drafts, Dynasty, just kept rising man 107 i think it ended up at and i was at the 108 um uh, when was... i looked this up when i look when i looked this up last night rondo moore was at the 109 and terrace marshall was 111 so those are pretty close a little bit in, in in about a week's time those have closed a little bit that encourages me that people are starting to know yeah marshall doing. i think like a couple of weeks ago was he started... going was going in the second I was like, like say mid second. Of second so those did close. That that kind of supports our argument, in my opinion. So at the end of the day, when I was put on the clock, I just couldn't take a receiver of that mold at the 108. I would have rather sure. had a Rondell Moore at like the last pick of the first, first couple of picks of the second. And I did try to move back up to get both. So, But no, at the end of the day, Terrence Marshall, once you get uh, Robbie Anderson out of the way, and there is a world where, uh, where Terrence Marshall is a better receiver than DJ Moore. It, it could happen. It could happen. I mean, look who, uh, look okay. who Marshall played with in LSU. Go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll gloat all day about this guy. Not gloat. But. Next, next up is Elijah Mitchell or Javian Hawkins. Elijah Mitchell or Javian Hawkins. And so these are pretty deep fantasy dives here. So yeah. I'm going to say that Elijah Mitchell was drafted by the 49ers in like the fifth round. And Javian Hawkins was drafted by the Falcons and didn't bother to look it up. Uh, he wasn't drafted at all. That's right. I took an undrafted player in the second round of our rookie draft. An undrafted player that can get tackled by a stiff breeze. <laughs> um, he has, like, I know we talked about this before the show, but uh, I know Javon Hawkins is super fast and everything. Right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. his. That's it. All he's got. He's super fast. He's small. He is incredibly he weak. He produced in in college. Yeah. Whereas Eliza Mitchell produced in college. And, and so like, That's this is size, what I love about him. He's got, he's got size, he's got speed. He has production in college. 
His negatives were that he played behind a great offensive line and he didn't play against very good uh, talent, or like very like, talented schools. So, so the you put him be behind a, little... a good offensive line in San Francisco, and there you go. Mm-hmm. You're gonna. He's. So I love. Ta- I love Elijah Mitchell. Mitchell. I love Eliza Mitchell more than I love Trey Sermon in the 49ers offense. I think. Okay, um, I will take. Uh... Based solely on situation, I will take. Uh, I'm just now. I'm forgetting names here. Elijah Moore, Jamie Hawkins, or Elijah Mitchell. Javian Hawkins is who I'm going to take because that's who I took. Uh, and I'm not just saying that; just to support who I took. Um, I think it's situation based. I think Mike Davis isn't a true one. While I think he'll come out of the gate and probably produce pretty well as a one, I think as the season wears on, remember 17 games, folks. Um, that you know. It, Passing work will fall to Javian, and uh, I think that's going to be huge in both PPR and half point PPRs. Um, and yeah, it's they're both running back dart throws. I think there's too many people uh, in the way in San Francisco, uh, including Trey Sermon and the obvious one, Mostert. Uh, but in both cases, we're looking for injury or veteran falling I off. I don't know if you're necessarily player. looking for that with with Elijah Mitchell because I mean, like we talked about with Trey well, Sermon, Mostert's the starter. Um, Right. That means nothing in San Francisco. Absolutely nothing. I think it means they're 60, 70 percent. I don't think it does easily. I think it I does. think it's I think it's random. I think it's random running back goes off on a certain week and that's all it is. Well, one could use that to argue against uh, against taking a Niners running back. You know, you could look at it the other way is what I'm saying. There's, there's I know. you never know who to start. So it, it, we're both trying to grab a guy that we think might have an opportunity, and it's I guess it's closer than I thought, but I reached. I reached for, for him, that's for sure. Yep. But, that's you know, that's for sure. Sometimes you um, let's do you let's do um back. let's do a quick uh I, I was gonna I had this under lightning round, but we got plenty of time. So okay. and redraft Miles Gaskin or JK Dobbins. Miles Gaskin, JK Dobbins. Good one. Uh Gaskin, though. Actually pretty easy. Wow. For me. Not even close for me and it's Dobbins. It goes back to my Ravens hate. My Lamar hate. My, my Lamar love that has now become Lamar hate, apparently, in a matter of several uh, weeks. But I mean, like, they've been, the Ravens have been running the ball very successfully with Lamar Jackson, and you get you get Mark Ingram out of the way. The only real competition right. that, I, that I Dobbins Gus has is, is Gus Edwards. Gus is and that's fine. And J.K. Dobbins can do it all. So can Miles Gaskin. But right. the Dolphins ha- don't have as good of an offense line that the Ravens do, and the uh, Malcolm Butler, uh, I'm sorry, Malcolm Brown was also signed to the Dolphins too. Is he the greatest back in the world? No, but he can he could pose a threat, more of a threat to Miles Gaskin than Salvin Ahmed or um, whoever else the they again? have there. Not Ahmed, but the one you were worried about taking spot. Who? Malcolm Brown. Oh yeah, for sure. No, he'll be involved. Moran. Um, he'll be involved. I just think Dobbins. Whereas, whereas ca- Dobbins is coming into year two, and he right. showed a lot of promise last year. And I, I loved, I loved Dobbins this year. And with a three hundred four um, ADP, totally in for that I ADP. Don't I don't get it. I think he needs catches to be uh, RB one. Are you two. serious? RB two. He needs catches to be. I don't say fantasy relevant. Because he could be fantasy relevant. He has more talent than Miles Gaskin. He has a better situation. I think situation. Gus is going to take most of the goal lines, and I don't think Lamar throws to the running back enough for Dobbins to be that good. And Gaskins has has the backfield, not to himself, as we just said. No, he but, doesn't. He, but is he, not, has, he is not nearly as secure as you think. I disagree completely. Again, I'm not right, saying well, he's going to take 90%. Your is I think Dobbins is a more talented player. I just think it's a matter of situation. I okay. think well put your, put your put your money where your mouth is. How Dobbins versus Gaskin year long. More fantasy points, Dobbins or Gaskin. We go year long or go average. We go year long, year long. And, and injury nullifies the bet. Significantly. Obviously. Injury. Obviously. Six games? Okay. Agreed. Miss miss more than four games. Done. Oh, what, we'll what put it we, on the board. What are, we, what are we betting? Oh, Snickers ice cream bar, of course. Oh. I could go for the ones yeah. right about now. Yeah, me too. It's, uh, weather's warming up. I could go for a Snickers ice cream bar. Put it on the board. Okay. Okay. And and so I said that that Dobbins is his ADP was three hundred four. I didn't say Gaskin. His is five hundred one. So Gaskin is the cheaper running back. That's fair. And, and more you know, people right, love Dobbins. I, That's fair. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, and kind of rightfully so, I guess. It's not the 
greatest situation that Gaskin is in. But I mean, t- I mean, with those ADPs, you could draft both of them. You know, you can have both of them on your team and very easily, rec- and go wide receiver early. I like um, that. yeah, or you can. I, I mean, with, I mean, if you're if you're going just on ADP, you can get a wide receiver in between them too. Well, we're right, but and not necessarily, but you're probably going wide receiver, wide receiver to open the draft if you're looking at Dobbins and Gaskin as your one two, right? I didn't say they had to be your one two. I just said you could draft both of them. Now that I would like even more, go running back heavy and have them as your two three. But um, that would be amazing, right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, I'm a little higher on Gaskin, but I, I just want everybody. To, I want to be perfectly clear. Everybody understands he's not the most talented dude in the world. I don't want to call him a middling talent, but Dobbins is ta- more talented. It's just situation that they have in Baltimore. And versus situation they have in Miami, I just I think I think they didn't bring anybody in, even though they tried for to take Gaskin's job. They didn't. They didn't, it didn't work. Yeah, they, they there was a rumor they tried to get. Um, anyway, let's go ahead. It was during the draft. Yep. Uh, so redraft once again for our next one, mm-hmm. and this is redraft because these are two rookies. Redraft Trey Sermon or Javante Williams. Oh, Redra- Re- remember, remember, redraft. that's why it's tough. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm just like, I'm just making sure that like, you know, people listening and everything are I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to go Javante Williams. There's still a possibly Gordon gets moved. Yeah, it's highly it's it's more. It becomes more unlikely the more days we get close to training camp. But I'm going to go Javante. <sighs> Good defense in Denver. Yeah. All right. It's cool. close. It's um, close. I, I am... Sermon may not get in there. I'm going to go with the, I think that Javante Williams is more talented, so I'm going to go with him. I don't really like either one of their situations, but I'm going to go with, if I don't like situation, I'm going to go with at least the more talented guy, and that's Javante Williams. So, um, next up, redraft, Justin Tucker or Young Way Koo? Justin Tucker, Young Way Koo. Oh, sorry, before you answer, uh, Trey Sermon is going at the 1201 and just and Redraft, uh, right? Yeah, yep, yeah. and Javante Williams is going the eleven twelve. So they're literally back to back. Okay, that's one Situation of the reasons. Why again. That's yeah, one of the yeah. reasons why I was like, well, you know, let's let's split some hairs here. Uh, on to my, the next one: Justin Tucker, Young Wiku, kickers, kickers, redraft, right? Mm-hmm. Tucker, I'm going Ku. I think the Atlanta offense is a little more powerful. Can easily get, can Sometimes has more having a little forward. less powerful offense is good though, because you kick more field goals. Yeah, I know. We can we can debate. I this know. Yeah, we're not going to do kicker yeah. now. It's so kickers. I just I was just throwing <laughs> them. Funny, I was yeah. throwing them in as a, as a as a fun little thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip around here a little bit. Uh, redraft Debo Samuel or Cortland Sutton. I got to go Sutton with what I believe would be the more not to say super pass heavy, but the more pass heavy attack in Denver and the more alpha type receiver on the outside in Sutton. Yeah, that's potentially to... the potentially the better quarterback too. I mean, if Drew Lock, Drew Lock has the the capability of being the better quarterback, then Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm going to just move forward with the fact with the assumption how much that Jimmy Lance, Garoppolo for the... got to see much. Lance. Oh, well, we were talking redraft. You're right. It's supposed to be Garoppolo all year. Eh, we'll see about that. I but still I mean, would I'm just saying, like, I, even if I, it's Lance, I, like I still agree too. because Lance. We'll have to see how much Lance throws if he doesn't just run a ton. I don't think we're going to see Lance this year, okay. or yeah. not not a, not a big chunk of it. So, and let's okay. just move forward with the assumption that it is Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo. In which so, case, I still go. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Cortland Sun's more talented than Debo as just pure wide receiver wise. I know fits the Debo's kind more. of a what's yeah. Give yeah. us more of a the Swiss Army knife, but you know, I don't know. More of a running, uh, so, uh, receiver in a running back's body, also. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Sutton's the seven oh four, and Debo Samuel is the seven oh nine. So they're pretty close. Yeah, I'm going Sutton um, there for sure. I, 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 I okay. So uh, our last dynasty one: Amon Ra, mm-hmm. St. Brown, wide receiver drafted by the the Lions, or Michael Carter. Uh, Running back drafted by the Jets. Still redraft, correct? Uh, no, this is Dynasty. Still probably going running back there. Uh, yeah, Michael Carter. Okay, I'm Opportunity. I'm with you, and but it's pretty close. Amon Ross St. Brown, his ADP has gone up to 202. It actually went down because we last week looked at it and it was at it was Dang. it was at the end of the first. Really? Goodness gracious. 
Michael Carter is 208, and he went in the first with the first pick of the second round in our draft. Not that I can blame anyone. Mm-hmm. I tried to trade. I tried trading up for that pick. So, you know. anyways, I, I to be honest, I tried trading up and also keeping my second as well. So I was kind of uh, I was trying to have my cake and eat it too. Yep. Yep. Uh, um, real real quick, uh, just Adam Troutman or Cole Komet. Adam Troutman, Cole Komet, tight end says that's what. What's going on here? Troutman, if you don't know, is the oh, I, know. I think it's his second year in New Orleans. So I think and he, he just was a pretty his second year. Okay, no? so he's going in his third. Okay. Maybe. Either way, he got opportunity last year. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. He got some opportunity last year. Um the Saints well, haven't really used the tight haven't really utilized a tight end all well, that much. They, uh, a lot of the opportunity was blocking. Graham. He really came around with blocking, and I know this is a fantasy show, but blocking will keep him on the field. I know quite a bit about him because I am a fantasy manager. I'm sorry, dynasty manager of his, and oh, okay. I'm holding out hope that uh, he gets his uh, uh, even like a legit offensive pass catching opportunity this year, as this opposed is to redraft. Sna- we're talking about redraft, right? As opposed to last year where he was more of a uh, blocker, got snaps but didn't mm-hmm. get targets. I'm not saying he didn't get any; he didn't get much. Uh, so they lose. Who is the old Denver receiver? Emmanuel Sanders. Um, my my little bit of trepidation is the quarterback situation. I don't know necessarily what to expect. But given the tight end landscape, I think I'm going to go the New Orleans Saints tight end Troutman, who showed he can stay on the field last year and has been dominated in college at a smaller school. That's what I'm going to go with. Mm. I'm gonna go Cole Komet all day, and I love I love Cole Komet so much. I don't I, hate it. I don't hate it because I just don't know what the quarterback's going to do with his tight ends. I love him so so much this year. Like, oh he's a my good god, pick. they're both he's... right there with uh, 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 tight end sleepers. I guess you call them. Komet's probably ranked higher. Do you have an ADP there for us? Um, Cole Komet is a fourteen oh six, and Troutman is a fourteen oh eight. I mean, there you go. Literally, guys, like your last, almost your last pick of the draft. Just I, I tight end. Man, I love I love Cole Komet so much. But these, but what I'm saying so, these these so are your much. tight. This is when you put on tight end. Like you, you're you're targeting commit, commit. I might be targeting, uh, uh, but I mean, like this is also like we're into that neighborhood of yeah. like right now. You're looking at, oh my god, I waited on tight end too long and blah blah blah. That's, Who's a guy that I could get? Mm-hmm. Cole commit dart throw. I mean, oh man, I love him so much. Sorry, no, it's okay. Um, I, I feel what? very similar about Troutman, and they're real close. Anyway, so that's 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 interesting. And this is not a would you rather, but uh, does Bryant catch or no catch? I mean, obviously it was a catch. The NFL came out and admitted it like two or three years later. It was not a catch. And not only was it a catch, it was a touchdown. Based on, based on the rules that, that were in place at the time, it was not a catch. No, the NFL literally came out. The referee said, based on the rules at the time, we messed that up. Or at the very least, they said the rules were so jacked up, that should have been a catch. A lot of decisions no, were made after I'm that gonna, loss no, to Green I'm Bay. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna respectfully disagree. That's that you're just trying to be a, a jackass and start stuff. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> oh, so I mean, that's that's kind of been our losers in our little game, our, our would you rather game. Um, we'll probably be playing this a little bit more often as we kind of go along in the off season here. Um, coming up here in a little bit we're going to be doing um some mock we're going to do a mock draft before the end of the month um next week we're going to do some more rookies that we love because you know it's kind of let's let's talk about some rookies you know like it's yeah. the draft just got done not that long ago i mean it's a what three weeks ago by now but whatever two weeks i don't know man it's well we've been doing folks have been doing their rookie drafts for dynasty and True. I mean, the draft startups. was only two weeks ago, so I mean, it's. I mean, just imagine Dynasty going through startups, startup, whatever. Oof, that's Dynasty, a, what? We're just imagine going through that startup slow draft. I mean, I don't remember how many weeks it took. Month, two. I don't remember how long it took. It took a while. I'd be going. I'd be going crazy. Our draft yeah. has actually gone pretty quick. It's, I mean, we're it's, we're doing slow draft. Well, we had about it's, half the league, maybe more than half, real active, and the other two or three were very active because the draft is going on. So. Yeah, we flew through those first like seven, eight picks. Yeah, I was I was very surprised of how quickly it's it was gone. quick. E- even you know, being me having what four or five drafts under my belt as far as that goes, uh, it was quick. It was absolutely quick. 
the big the longest wait time was um like i i did my pick at the 104 and then it was kind of in the middle of the night too so then it was like the next morning the 105 went it was like seven hours in between Mm -hmm. and that was mainly because you know night (laughs) anyways so uh we're doing. We're going to do a mock draft before the end of the month. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about some more rookies that we love and their landing spots and situations and talent and all of that. I know we've kind of been doing rookies a lot, but that's kind of this time of the year. Um, we're going to take a little break in the month of June. Um, I'm going to try and focus on doing some more player videos. I've done some eye on eye on um, Baker Mayfield, uh, Nick Chubb, not a Browns fan, uh, Robert Woods, and who's the other guy? Oh, Chris Carson. And I'm working on a 201 right now. Um, it's I'm almost done watching all the game film. I got to record it and edit it and everything. So hopefully by next week it'll be done. Um, but I want to just like so we're not so in June. Even though we're going to be not doing weekly shows, um, we will be still creating content, which you can find on YouTube. Um, you know, just search for Amazing Fantasy Football on YouTube. Yep. And if you are watching us on YouTube. You can check us out in podcast format. You can get it pretty much wherever podcasts are available. You can get it from uh, Chester behind your local grocer, or we don't encourage you to get your podcast that way, but Hey, if that's how you do it, fine, whatever. We're not here. We're not here to judge you. Um, and if you're listening in podcast format, as mentioned, you can check out our YouTube channel. You can see all of our um, video episodes and my ion videos and everything. Chris is going to be doing some videos as well in the month of June. And we're kind of going to take that month of June too, to kind of, um, do some behind the scenes work as well. So absolutely improve the um, show until next week. I am Josh. He is Chris. And we would like you to continue wearing your mask, even though the CDC said you didn't have to if you're vaccinated. But hey, only about like what 54% of the country is vaccinated at this moment. So just please, everyone, just keep wearing a mask, please. Um, we're almost there. I mean, almost probably there. another month or so. I don't think that's much to ask. But until then, have a goodbye, everybody. Hasta luego.